Has this ever happened to you? You are doing chemistry homework and all of a sudden, you see MO diagrams, and you don't know what to do. Worry not. Today we're going to learn about molecular orbitals. First, we'll look at sigma bonding. Sigma bonds do not have any nodal planes in the internuclear axis. The second bond is pi bonding. In a pi bond, there is a nodal plane on the internuclear axis. Next, we are going to talk about molecular orbitals. It is super important to remember that the number of atomic orbitals is equal to the number of molecular orbitals. We are going to look at the H2 molecule to understand the first level of molecular orbitals. Looking at the electron configuration of hydrogen, each hydrogen atom contributes one s atomic orbital. These two s orbitals can combine in two ways. In yellow, we see where in each atom electrons can be found. When these two atoms combine, the green line shows where electrons can be found in the new orbital. There are no nodal planes and most of the electrons can be found in the middle. The orbital created is called a sigma bonding 1s orbital. The second way that s orbitals can combine is destructively. The green line shows that there is a smaller area where electrons can be found. This is an antibonding sigma orbital. We can draw an MO diagram for the sigma 1s bonding and antibonding orbitals. 1s orbitals contribute electrons to the diagram. Antibonding orbitals are higher in energy because there are less areas where electrons can be. What about molecular orbitals of the second energy level? 2s orbitals behave similarly to that of the 1s orbitals we just saw. However, now we have the introduction of p orbitals. p orbitals can be configured in three different ways. x, y, and z. Each configuration has a nodal plane. Here is a close-up of the three types of arrangements. The first type of bonding that the p orbitals will do is a head-on collision. If the orbitals combine constructively, then a sigma 2 p bonding orbital is formed. If the collision is a destructive combination, then a sigma 2 p antibonding orbital is formed. There will be a node between the two p orbitals. The remaining two p orbitals will not have a head-on collision, but rather bond to other orbitals on their sides. Again, a constructive combination will produce a bonding orbital. Since there is a nodal plane on the internuclear axis this is a pi bond. When there is a destructive combination, the pi orbital will be antibonding. Before constructing a molecular orbital diagram, let's create a diagram of the different orbitals in the second energy level. The sigma 2s bonding orbital has the least energy. Next, is the sigma 2s antibonding orbital. Now, we move on to the p orbitals. The sigma 2p bonding orbital is next on the graph. Then, comes the pi 2p bonding orbitals. Remember that there are two of them because there are two p orbitals that bond sideways. After that are the pi 2p antibonding orbitals. The last and highest in energy is the sigma 2p orbital. Now we can construct our molecular orbital diagram. We know that in the second energy level, electrons come from the 2s and 2p atomic orbitals. We can then fill in our molecular orbitals from the last diagram. Let's apply everything we've just learned to this carrot. Or more specifically, this beta carotene molecule. Beta carotene is an orange colored compound that gives color to carrots, sweet potatoes, and flamingo feathers. To find atomic orbitals, we are going to look at these two parts of the beta carotene molecule and determine their hybridization. This carbon atom is connected to another carbon atom. It still has three valence electrons that will bond to hydrogen atoms. This carbon atom is bonded to a total of four atoms and will have an sp3 hybridization. The second carbon atom is double bonded to one carbon atom, and single bonded to another carbon atom. The remaining valence electron will bond to hydrogen atom. This carbon atom is bonded to total of three atoms, and has an sp2 hybridization. Next, it's time for us to count the molecular orbitals of beta carotene. We start off by counting the total atomic orbitals present in the molecule. First, we count the number of carbon atoms. Each carbon atom contributes four atomic orbitals. We get a total of 160 atomic orbitals from the carbon atoms. We then count the number of hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom contributes one atomic orbitals. We get a total of 56 atomic orbitals from the hydrogen atoms. 
adding together the 160 atomic orbitals from carbon and 56 atomic orbitals from hydrogen, we get a total of 216 atomic orbitals in beta carotene. We know that the number of atomic orbitals are equal to the number of molecular orbitals, meaning that we have 216 molecular orbitals in beta carotene. It's time to find out how many of those molecular orbitals are sigma molecular orbitals. We know that each single bond in beta carotene contributes an s atomic orbital which forms sigma bonds. We have a total of 97 single bonds, which contribute 97 s atomic orbitals. Each of these orbitals form one sigma bonding orbital and one sigma antibonding orbital. Making a total of 194 sigma molecular orbitals, out of the 216 total molecular orbitals, 194 of them are sigma molecular orbitals. What about the remaining 22 orbitals? These orbitals will be pi molecular orbitals. We have 22 total pi molecular orbitals, meaning that half are pi bonding and half are pi antibonding. There are 11 of each kind. Let's start the molecular orbital diagram with an axis of increasing energy. There are 97 sigma bonding orbitals, which are the lowest energy. 11 pi bonding orbitals. 11 pi antibonding orbitals. And 97 sigma antibonding orbitals. We'll start filling in our molecular orbitals with electrons starting with the sigma bonding orbitals. Each sigma bonding orbital can contain two electrons. All of the sigma bonding orbitals will be filled, using 194 electrons. The remaining 22 electrons will occupy the pi orbitals. These 22 electrons will fill up 11 of the pi bonding molecular orbitals. We can identify the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. Next we are going to draw the HOMO and the LUMO. We are going to draw out 22 pi orbitals. The energy difference between the HOMO and the LUMO depend on the number of nodes. As you go up in the number of nodes, you increase in energy. The HOMO has 10 nodes and the LUMO has 11. A node occurs when there is antibonding. So we need to create 10 sites of antibonding in the HOMO to get 10 nodes. We can repeat this process in the LUMO to get a total of 11 nodes. And we're done.